Now the trick here is to remember that objects have properties. The commandlets that we're going to look at work directly with those properties. So the big thing is finding out what properties are available to you. And again, PowerShell is all about self-discovery. You don't have to go look it up in some developer documentation. You don't have to go look it up in a book. All you have to do is pipe an object to the get member commandlet. And PowerShell will be happy to show you what properties are available for you to work with. And this is key. You must get used to piping objects to get member so you can find out what they can do. If you're not willing to do that, then you're going to get stuck in Windows PowerShell. This is a really core skill. Let's take a look at how it works. The trick to most of PowerShell's key functionality is the fact that commandlets work with objects, not text. In order to work with these objects, you need to know what the objects can do, and that's where the get member commandlet comes in handy. I'll pipe a bunch of service objects to get member to see what properties and methods these objects have. The properties in particular tell me the different ways I can sort, filter, measure, and select services when I'm working with them. You should get used to using get member. In fact, you should be so used to it that you use its alias, GM, rather than the full commandlet name as I'm doing here when I retrieve a bunch of process objects using the PS alias and pipe them to GM. Now, the sort object commandlet accepts a property or a comma separated list of properties and sorts objects based on the values of those properties. It sorts in ascending order by default, and you can specify the descending parameter to reverse the sort order. Whatever objects you pipe in are piped right back out, just in a different order. Now, before you can sort objects, you need to know what properties they have, and that's where getMember comes in handy. Once you know the property you want to sort on, just pipe the objects to sort object and give it the property, such as name, that you want it to sort on. Specify the descending parameter if you want to reverse the sort order, as I'm doing here with service names. Of course, you can also use aliases. Here, I'm getting all of the processes and sorting them on handles in descending order. Again, the fact that these processes are objects makes this possible. They have a handles property, enabling the objects to be easily reordered before being converted to text by out default. Finally, I'll get services again, this time using the GSV alias, and sort them on their status property. The services remain objects until out default converts them to text. All right, so let's talk about grouping objects. The idea here is to group objects on whatever property you specify using the group object commandlet. For example, you might specify the status property. That's going to look at the status property for every object you give it and put those in different groups based on that property. So every object that has the same value in the property you specify will wind up in a group all by itself. Here's what it looks like. Grouping is pretty much like sorting. I'll get a bunch of services and then group them on their status property. You can see that the result is two groups, and I can see how many objects were put into each group. Sorting doesn't have any effect on this. I'll get the services, sort them on status, and then group them, and you can see that I get the same results. You can also measure objects with Windows PowerShell. By default, the measure object commandlet just counts the number of objects that you pipe into it, but you can also do some other tricks with it. What's important to remember, though, is that whatever objects are piped in are not piped out. Measure object consumes the input object, and it produces measurement objects on the backside. I'll show you. Measuring objects is cool. At its simplest, I get a bunch of objects, services, in this case, and, and I pipe them to measure object, and it tells me how many there are. Certainly useful, and remember that any group of object can be measured. Uh, lines in a text file, event log entries, and so forth. But you can do more. I'll get a bunch of processes and ask measure object to measure not only how many there are, but to also look at the handles property and give me an average, minimum, and maximum. Very useful functionality. If you can imagine using this with performance data, you'll start to get an idea of how much power you can pack into a short command. Select object accepts pipeline objects and just keeps the properties you specify. This is useful for reducing the amount of information the shell displays to just the information you want, or for displaying properties which aren't normally displayed. The original objects that you pipe in are consumed, and they are not piped back out. Instead, custom objects with just the properties you specified are output. 
Because you lose the original objects this way, you'll want select object to be one of the last commandlets in your pipeline. You can also have select object just keep the last 10 or the first 10 or, or however many you need. Select object dash first 10 or select object dash last 20, for example, will keep the first or last 20 objects. Now if you do this, select object will actually pipe out the original objects. It's not going to modify them in any way. It's just going to keep whatever number you specified. I'm going to start by getting a bunch of process objects. Then I'm sorting them on their handles property. So I still have the same objects, they're just in a different order than they were initially. Next, I'm just selecting the first 10 of them. The result is a convenient list of the top handle using processes on my system. Okay, next I'm going to work with services, retrieving all of them and sorting them by name. Rather than displaying the three properties that PowerShell selects for me, I just want to display the name and status properties. As you can see, the result is a table with just the two properties I specified. Now we'll talk later about how to customize the look of this table, since its default layout is a little weird, all spaced out like this. I want to emphasize something though. Let's run that same command again, only this time we'll pipe the final objects to get member. Let's walk through this. GSV is an alias for get service, so it's pulling service objects into the pipeline. Sort object reorders those objects, but they're still service objects. Select object is just grabbing the name and status properties. Here's a problem though. Services have more than just a name and a status. There's no way to take off the rest of the properties of a service object. So what select object does is create a brand new type of object, which just has a name and a status property. It copies the values from my service objects into a bunch of these new custom objects. And it's those custom objects which wind up in the pipeline. When I run this command, getMember verifies that my service objects are gone, and I'm left with these trimmed down objects. Select object always does this when you specify a property list as I did. Please pause this video now and follow the instructions in your lab guide to complete this lab. There are hints in the lab guide if you need them, and try to complete the lab without referring to the solution in your lab guide. When you're done, resume this video and I'll review a sample solution with you. Here are some sample solutions for lab 5-1. Task 1 is simple enough. By piping get service to get member, I can see the properties and methods, collectively they're referred to as members, of a service object. For task 2, I'm doing the same thing, only with a different type of object, event log entries. This allows me to see the property names that are available for an event log entry. In task 3, I'm getting a bunch of processes, sorting them on handles in descending order, and then selecting the first 10 of them to be converted to text and displayed. In task 4, I'm getting service objects and grouping them on their status property so that I can quickly see how many are running and how many are stopped. For task 5, I'm counting the total number of services by piping get service to measure object. And in task 6, I use measure object again, but this time I measure the average, minimum, and maximum of the process objects on my computer. Finally, in task 7, I start by retrieving events from the security event log. I pipe those to select object and just keep the event ID and time generated properties so that I can just look at the information that interests me.